Welcome to Ride Over Stride, episode 80. Welcome to Ride Every Stride with Van Hargis, a podcast about horsemanship and more. Our goal is to educate, motivate, inspire, and entertain through an exploration of everything horsemanship in the intersection of horsemanship and humanship. My name is Melanie Hargis, and I'm your co-host on Ride Every Stride. I'm here with Master Horseman, Van Hargis. Hey, everybody. I tell you what, it's really good to be back. Um, You know, this is what, Melanie? This is your second episode, right? All right, knocking two of them out. Uh, we're really glad that you guys have joined us again for Ride Over Stride, and uh, we're really excited uh, today to bring you the second podcast we've brought to you in a while. It's been a while, but you know we're going to get over the even talking about the fact that it's been that gap, because in some ways, it seems like it's been a very long time. In other ways, as soon as we started recording again, it just it, it was almost like we never left. So in that oh. regard, well, for me anyway... So in that it's regard, it's just, yeah, it's all new to you. <laughs> anyway, you're doing a really good job, Miss Melanie. I appreciate you. you uh, appreciate you guys being on there. And appreciate you guys being patient with us uh, and, and keeping the encouraging words coming. Because quite frankly, I had gotten to the point where I thought, you know what, as much as I really wanted to do the podcast again, I'd gotten to the point where I thought, you know, it's been a while. We we just may go ahead and let it lay down and, and be rested, so to speak. But through the consistent encouragement of so many people and the phenomenal stories that we've heard from so many different people. It, um, it, it really would have been a horrible injustice on my part not mm-hmm. to continue doing it. So thank you guys. Thank you all so much for listening and giving a, giving Ride Over Stride a purpose, a purpose well beyond what we ever thought that it mm-hmm. would. And uh, I'm not going to tell anybody exactly, but I'll tell you that our listenership numbers before we kind of laid it to rest for a while, the listenership numbers was actually like the number one or number two equine related podcast in the country. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if I'm really privileged to share with you what the numbers were, but I'm telling you, they were they in- were wonderful, you incredibly had shocking. I mean, mm-hmm. if someone had told me that we'd have had that many listeners, I would have n- never believed them in a hundred years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm confident now that we are back on the air again and we're, we're, we're producing these, that we'll not only get those same loyal listeners back, but at the same time, I think Ride Over Stride is going to grow astronomically. Well, and that's one of the good things of a podcast just in general, uh, because we actually had uh, an email today. Yeah, which, yeah, we sure did. Um, but I mean, just because it's been a while since... We've got had one out there, and we're going to keep them coming regularly. Somebody could have just started listening to it yesterday. Well, in fact, you know, we had a lady here not too long ago that uh, she found us here in Sulphur Springs, not in Sulphur Springs, but here in Victoria, from listening to the podcast. And she mm-hmm. ke- said she just kept listening to us say, you know, come join us at the ranch, come ride with us at the ranch. And, and before you know it, she up and came down and spent, I think, what was it, five days five with days. us. Mm-hmm. And uh, all because she had listened to the podcast. So you guys don't know what that means to us to know that um, that what we're doing is making a difference in people's lives and most importantly, making a difference in their horsemanship and, of course, in their humanship, which is one of the reasons that it was really, it, that alone inspired us and motivated us to redo the podcast and bring it back out. And, of course, in that transition, we discovered, too, that probably the most efficient way for us to bring that to you was, of course, to have Miss Melanie come on as our new co-host. And, of course, we wish Laura all the luck in the world with her phenomenally successful podcast um, that she already does, which mm-hmm. is called The Productive Woman. If you guys haven't listened to that one yet, then please do, because it's not only just, I mean, it's really, truly phenomenal. Um, it's actually one of my, one of my favorite podcasts, and dang it, I'm not even a woman. Uh, but Which it does. She, she, yeah, it's very productive. It's really leaves some phenomenal, good hints, tips, suggestions, and even sometimes in some cases some methods of really utilizing your time and uh, and not just utilizing your time, but making yourself feel good as you do it. So just really, really good information, and I really appreciate her for that, mm-hmm. and thank her also for helping us not only get the podcast originally started, 
but for still encouraging me to continue to do so. So that's where we are, and that's mm-hmm. where we're that's where we're headed. And for those of you who may not know yet, we are now available on YouTube. So the listeners can continue listening and take this YouTube or take this podcast with you as you drive, clean stalls, or do whatever. But for those of you who have a chance to sit down and maybe check out your iPhone, your your iPad. Uh, or even Android. sitting at at home on your TV, whatever the case may be, or at your laptop. You can actually watch the podcast now, and you can watch Melly and I as we interact here in the studio. And that's going to be important, not just for us two interacting. It's another platform for us to bring you the podcast, yes. but it's also a platform that gives us a better opportunity to do interviews and have you folks get to see how we interact with those who come and visit with us here at the ranch, whether it be other trainers or perhaps even our guests that just come in and ride with us and spend some time with us. Yes. So looking forward to, the, to doing that. Uh, well, let's see. Last one, we were talking about the path of least resistance. Yes. And we want to move on uh, to forward motion. Absolutely. And we you did mention last time, so what would be next? In other words, mm-hmm. was we, when do you move from working on one thing with a horse into moving with the other thing? Right. And if you'll remember what I said at that, on that previous episode is that we actually do both kind of at the same time, but I don't allow whatever's coming next to distract me from what I'm working on presently. In other words, I really want to make sure that this horse understands not just the idea of, and here's that phrase that you guys have heard me say so many times in the past, also want to make sure the horse understands the spirit and intent of seeking out that path of least resistance. Why? Because that is the absolute basic foundation for everything we're going to ask that horse to do in the future. Everything from yielding his hips to, to yielding the shoulders away from us, being soft and light in the face, um, being light on his feet. In other words, everything we ask this horse to do from a responsive standpoint, the foundation of that starts with understanding that path of least resistance. So I can't emphasize how important that is. So as we are developing that, we can do what you women call multitasking. You know, <laughs> you, you women folk are a lot better at that than us men folk, but you, you women folk do that multitasking thing very well. So as I'm working on the path of least resistance, I'm going to begin to work on a little bit of the forward motion. Okay. And again, when I'm working on the forward motion, I have to emphasize to people that I don't give a flying flip if this horse is at a walk, a trot, a canter, uh, or if he's just at a full-out gallop. I prefer them do everything nice and slow and methodic. But at the same time, um, I just ask for forward motion. I'm not to the point yet where I can say forward motion to the right, forward motion to the right at a trot. Right. You see, I just want them to go forward. And as mm-hmm. they're going forward, I'm also working on and re-emphasizing that concept of that path of least resistance. So we're actually combining those two now. So we emphasize that concept of the path of least least resistance, number one, and then from day one, we continue to work with that one forever and always, amen. Mm -hmm. We never quit working on teaching that horse to seek the path of least resistance. When I hear somebody say, well, is that horse light in the face, or that horse sure is light in the face, what I think is that horse understands that concept of the path of least resistance. Whenever I see a horse travel truly light and collected, meaning that he's got his shoulders elevated, he's soft and light in the face, he's engaged from the hind end, there's a horse that is not just understanding the spirit and intent of the path of least resistance, but there's a horse that has mastered it which is exactly why collection is at the very top of the pyramid of training. It's at the very top. Mm -hmm. At the very bottom is all these things that we're working on, we're discussing now. So it's your base, your foundation. You betcha. But you see, as we're putting that base, there's my little triangle. (laughs) Um, as As we're getting there, we're emphasizing how solid this down here must be. In other words, that bottom layer of that foundation has got to be so incredibly solid. So we introduce it early. Mm -hmm. 
and we continue to introduce it for the rest of this horse's career, we're emphasizing it. And for those of you who've listened to me before, we're talking a lot about what I refer to as refinement. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, we're very obvious. We're very deliberate. We're, you know, uh, we try to be so incredibly plain so the horse can understand what it is that we're communicating. I guess deliberate there is would be my favorite word. And the reason that is because I want that horse to not just be able to get the correct answer, but understand the question so that the answer comes to him more clearly. Over time, the refinement starts putting those things together with mm-hmm. less and less communication on our part, but with a greater understanding. Back to the spirit and intent. The spirit and intent is fully understood. <laughs> so as we're working on forward motion, what we're really doing is we're already starting the concept of refining the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. Gosh dang, that sounded kind of pretty good, didn't it? I need to put that into a book (laughs) or something. So as we are working toward forward motion, we're already refining the path of least resistance. You see, I really, really like that. So we're going to have to really emphasize that more and more in the future. Mm -hmm. See there, gosh dang, I couldn't do that if it wouldn't have been for a podcast. Thank you guys for giving me a chance to do that. <laughs> for giving me a chance to do that. That's, uh, but I think you know, gosh, if I have to say this to myself, I kind of like that. That's brilliant. So as we're working on forward motion, it already establishes the opportunity for us to start refining the path of least resistance. Yeah, I like that. I think that's the third time I've said it now, so maybe I won't forget it. I think you're good. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We're good on that one. So anyway, what we really want to emphasize though with forward motion is I want people to also. Be very happy if you've asked your horse to move. Don't worry about them moving safely yet. In other words, if you're just asking a horse to move, Mm -hmm. yes, we would like for the horse, we'd like to be very specific, like, okay, horse, move, but move exactly on my terms. Don't do anything that's going to spook me. Don't do anything that's going to scare me. Don't do anything that's going to upset me. Don't do anything that's going to upset my confidence. Just, Just go off nice and easy, would you please? That's too much to ask. Sorry, but that's just too much to ask. What we really want the horse to do in the beginning is just move. And why? Because we ask you to. The path of least resistance is movement, is moving away, Mm -hmm. seeking out that path of least resistance. Over time, the horse's natural instincts of efficiency Mm -hmm. will kick in, and he'll only move in a way that matches the resistance or the pressure, if you will, Mm -hmm. that you apply. So in the beginning, you might just barely move toward the horse, and he might bolt away. Well, he's working too hard. I've never fired anybody for working too hard. No. And nor would I encourage anybody else to. Don't get upset if the student and or the horse is working too hard. Give them an opportunity to do so. Sooner or later, they'll realize they only have to work as hard as you do. Mm-hmm. And it's because of that, though, I got to tell you, I get really ticked off when I watch people work a horse on a lunge line or I watch a horse, somebody work a horse in the round pen mm-hmm. and they stand their fat butt in one place and, move the horse and make the horse move around them and they don't do any movement on their part. What I think of is, number one, you're missing out on a great opportunity to get yourself in shape. Mm-hmm. And number two, you're missing out on the opportunity to teach your horse to work with you, not despite you or not in rhythm with you. That same person will be the one that has the bigger spurs and the bigger bit. What would you prefer or do you have a preference as far as a round pen or lunch line? Well, it depends on what I have available. You've been with me before. We've gone to do cult starting deals and they didn't have a round pen. It's, oh my gosh, man, I'm sorry. We're just not going to be able to do the cult starting thing because we don't have a round pen set up for you. Mm -hmm. And what did I do? Well, you still got the cult started. Still got that darn cult started. We don't. So, in other words, if I've got a round pen, I would love to have the round pen. Mm -hmm. And why? Because that round pen affords me the opportunity to work of continuity of movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if all I've got is a lunge line, then I'm going to use a lunge line. If all I've got is a six foot lead rope, then that's all I'm going to use is a six foot lead rope. In other words, whatever I've got, I'm going to work with. Mm -hmm. But I would prefer the horse in the beginning to move at liberty. Why? Because. I truly believe in what Tom Dorrance or well, what Tom Dorrance told me a long time ago, which was, if you ever pull on a horse, you'll always pull on a horse. Mm-hmm. 
if we're moving a horse around on the lunge line that doesn't understand how to balance himself and move and lunge freely without pulling on that lead rope, and I know a lot of people know what I'm talking about there as you're lunging a horse, then what the horse does as the centrifugal force works against them and as their desire to move further away from you works against them, they're leaning and pulling on the lead rope. Over time, they begin to associate whatever amount of pull that that is on that lead rope is acceptable. And to me, that's never acceptable. To coin another phrase from another phenomenal trainer that I've got a tremendous amount of respect for, and that would be Miss Lynn Palm. She used to emphasize a term all the time, or the phrase, self-carriage. If we allow a horse on the, and this is where, where it kind of starts, this is not what she meant by it exactly, but I took it to the nth degree that even when we're doing our groundwork on a horse, and this horse is traveling around at a nice, easy, even little jog trot on the end of that lunge line, but if that lunge line is not soft, in other words, there's not a little bit of a sag in that lunge line between me and the horse, then that horse is dependent on me mm-hmm. to help him with his carriage. In other words, he's using me for part of his balance. That's not self-carriage. Right. He can't travel unless he's traveled on his own, balancing with his own feet, balancing with his own head and neck. In other words, as a result of him having that lead rope nice and slack with me, he's already understanding that concept of being light and soft on the on the halter, but he's also understanding that concept of Carriage. So to answer your question, or self-carriage, so to answer your question, would I prefer a round pin or a lunge line? Of course, I would prefer a round pin. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to digress here just a little bit because we had a a really good discussion not long ago on Facebook, in fact, um, about this guy that was kind of dogging round pins. And um, I was totally okay with the fact that he had an argument for square pins versus round pins. However, I didn't like the fact that he was dogging round pins, Mm -hmm. but I read the entire article that the guy wrote and the guy shared, and uh, he had some phenomenal points on there, but his biggest reason for not liking round pins had a lot to do not so much with a round pin, but the misuse and abuse of a round pin. Rather than saying that several people were not using a round pin correctly, He basically categorized us all, and that's where I got a little offended, categorized us all that use round pins as cowboys that just chase them around until they get so tired the horse has got to comply. And I can't disagree more. Number one, if that's what he's seeing or if that's what he thinks or if that's what he's truly witnessing because somebody is maybe really doing those things, then we are seeing a gross misuse of the round pin. If we think about the round pin in the way that we are describing nothing beyond the basics, such Mm -hmm. as a tool in the beginning just to establish the path of least resistance, Mm -hmm. and then to use the round pin as a tool to establish the concept of forward motion, and then later we understand that that round pin is used as an opportunity to teach, not run around until he gets too tired, but to teach the concept of the control of forward motion, which means Mm -hmm. speed control as well as directional control, Mm -hmm. all still while working at Liberty. And here's because of people like him that made that comment about it. I have done this at a lot of expos, and I promise you folks that if it's done correctly, I will break a sweat a lot quicker than the colt will. And oftentimes, I will try to see if I can break a sweat, but the horse never Never does. does. Mm-hmm. Because I want to take away that idea and that concept that the purpose of that round pen, the purpose of running a horse around is tired. to get them hot and tired. And that's the furthest thing from the truth if it's done correctly. Mm-hmm. So you see, the, the purpose of the round pen is to encourage that continuity of movement. Okay. You see, in other words, that forward motion. I want that horse to not only... Um, move forward freely, but also wanting to move forward freely without restriction, without anything obstructing his way. And honestly, if I could get the same thing done in a wide open pasture without me having to wear out so much shoe leather, then I certainly would, because I Mm -hmm. truly think that we can't teach the horses correctly to live in our world under saddle, especially 
if they don't fully understand that path of least resistance and the concept of forward motion. Mm -hmm. And that concept of forward motion can't be taught without the freedom of forward motion. So they've got to have that freedom of movement of forward motion. So why not a square pin instead? Because livestock in general, I don't care if we're talking about goat, sheep, cattle, or horses, they have a real difficult time with right angles. So what, they're, what they have a tendency to do was run and stop, and then they're forced to make a decision to turn. Okay. They run and stop. They're forced to make a decision to turn. They run and stop. So square pins, triangular pins, rectangular pins, anything with right angles is very, very difficult for horses to so move around in, and it completely takes away their concept of forward motion. So why was the guy opposed to round pins and pro square pins? Because his whole concept had nothing to do with about getting the darn thing broke to ride. Mm -hmm. It was about just getting him gentled down to touch them. So see, we're comparing apples to oranges. He was was thinking that, oh, I just want that square pin because it makes it easier for me to approach the horse and harder for the horse to escape. Because they'll get to the corner. And and they'll get to the corner. Well, to me, that's like using a crutch. I don't mean Mm -hmm. that's not like I'm dogging the guy. I want the horse to have the freedom of movement, but yet he chooses not to when I ask him not to. Right. Probably the number one question that, pe- that students hear me ask a lot when they come here to the ranch and ride with me is I ask this question over and over and over again. Why is your horse moving? If I've asked them to get your horse off in a left lead canter, just go canter your horse around. And a few moments later, after the horse is cantering around in fairly rhythmic motion, I'll ask them, say, well, Miss Melly, why is your horse loping? I know the answer. And what would that answer be? Because I'm making him lope. You're making him lope or you're encouraging him to lope. In other words, I refer to it as like you're the dance leader. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lope is a three-beat gait, so you're dancing to a three-beat song. Who's the leader of that dance? Hopefully the rider. Mm -hmm. Now, why the question then, why is it important for the horse to understand why you're making him move? Because everybody's so freaking worried about stopping forward motion. And it starts with the horse understanding why he's going forward. Why is he going forward? To get in rhythm with you. Right. Why? Because in rhythm with you with you is easier than not being in rhythm with you. If he's loping too fast, he's working too hard. So then when my rhythm changes, his rhythm changes. Absolutely. If he's loping too slowly, you're going to be squeezing him and bumping him. Mm-hmm. Both of those are... The horse seeking the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. Bingo. What was the very first thing we talked about in this series? The path of least resistance. That's the number one thing the horse wants to learn. Mm -hmm. So we're asking the horse to lope correctly. Loping correctly is at the speed in which we establish, not through the kicking with our spurs and the pulling of our bit, but what we establish with our rhythm. Mm -hmm. Those tools are only to help reinforce what our rhythm establishes. I hope that makes sense to people. I'm going to repeat that. Our bits and our spurs, if you use either one, in other words, your headgear and your leg aids are nothing more than to support your seat aids, and your seat is what establishes your rhythm, whether it be in a walk, trot, or a canter. Mm -hmm. And that's under saddle. On the ground and around pin, it's the exact same thing. So when I ask my horse to move forward and move forward at a walk, All I want to do is move in such a rhythm that establishes a working relationship between me and the horse. Mm -hmm. If the horse is going too slow, I'm going to be, I'm going to be stepping into that path. In other words, that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. If I get too close, I'm going to add more pressure. Mm -hmm. So the horse moves further away. If he moves too far away, he's worked too hard. Over time, he'll establish that really good working relationship. If, if I speed up, he speeds up. If I slow down, he slows down. So as a result, we develop a very good working relationship. Over time in the round pen, we simply shorten that distance. We get to where that relationship between the two of us gets closer and closer and closer and closer until before you know it. I can't get any closer, Mr. Van, without getting on the darn thing. And then you get on. Well, good. We'll get on. Mm-hmm. Now... That's just a brief concept of forward motion and where it's going. Mm -hmm. There's going to be something that people are going to talk about or they're going to question me about later. 
And that is when we're not only working with forward motion, but later we're going to start talking about on our next episode, we're going to talk about the control of forward motion. Yes. And what does that entail? It entails kind of what we're touching on here a little bit. Mm -hmm. In other words, once that concept of forward motion is established, now we're going to start working on the speed control, the control of forward motion, the speed control aspect of it. And here's the part that's going to blow people's minds to where they're going to question me at first, and that's directional control. Mm -hmm. Whenever we're working in a round pen, I want to work a lot on directional control. Inside turns, outside turns, inside turns, outside turns. But in the beginning, I want to emphasize more so than anything, and here's the part that's going to piss people off, and that's the outside turns. Why on earth would I work on outside turns? Well, I guess you're just going to have to listen to our next episode mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're going to talk a lot about that next thing. So, so far in this new series that we've started in episode 79, now in 80, we've talked about on this new series that we're doing called Nothing Beyond the Basics. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about path number, number one, the path of least resistance. That's right. Mm -hmm. And number two, forward, forward motion. motion. In our next episode, we're going to talk a lot about the control, control of forward motion. That's mm -hmm. both speed control as well as directional control. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So again, you guys uh, send us your questions, your comments uh, to info at vanhargis.com. Um, don't forget to watch us on iTunes. On, uh, why do I always do that? On YouTube. Yep. And listen to the podcast on iTunes. Absolutely, yeah. And again, anybody has any other questions uh, podcast platforms that they would like us to uh, to uh, add to our little repertoire, let us know. Send us an email. Um, what else? Well, um, the Top Pan Club. Top Pan Club. Yep. You want to tell everybody about the Top Pan Club? Um, definitely. Uh, it's nine ninety five a month. Um, we can... Uh, well, you get discounts on everything and anything that's on our website between uh, all of our products, our bits, saddles. I, if you're looking for a saddle, 10% discount is a big discount. That's a big discount on our saddles, you bet. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, videos available, training videos, um, and we are continually adding more videos to the member, the Top Hand Club. Um in fact, if you guys see us at the Horse Expos, you'll almost always see me with a, uh, an additional microphone on. Not only a microphone and headset that the Expo provides for us. And I say Expos. We do this at clinics also, and we mm -hmm. also do it at just normal speaking engagements. So if I go speak at a banquet somewhere or at a conference or whatever the case may be, I'm always mic'd up for that as well. Mm -hmm. And some people would say, well, my goodness, why is your wife filming this, and why are you mic'd up with that other you know, your camera mic, and that's so that we can bring you guys that footage from whatever event that we go to so that you can feel like you're there also. You mm -hmm. Hopefully what that does, it, it reinforces some of the same things you, he you hear on our podcast. You're going to hear me say those same things over and over and over again at the expos and at the different presentations that we do throughout the country. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that so important? Is because, by golly, if I'm saying it that many times, it must be important to the success of your horsemanship. And there's no doubt in my mind that is the case. And I don't ever want this to come across as being boastful. But, you know, I, I love to brag about my horses. Um, you know, I've always, ever since I was doing day work many, many years ago, the thing that made me feel the best is whenever I went to one of the horse, one of the ranches, and everybody there wanted my horse, and it was the ranch horse that we used, and everybody wanted that one. And if I was there on a client horse doing day work and working cattle, people wanted my client's horse. So I took a lot of pride in how well my horses were trained at whatever task we were we were doing, and because of that is why we share all of the things that made those horses so good and what made those horses so good quite frankly was all the other trainers that had shared with me their knowledge mm -hmm. and i took that knowledge and i practiced it i went and i put that that knowledge to work and 
I vowed because of my horses being so successful, not because of so much what I did, but what I learned from so many people and learned from so many horses that I was going to share just like those guys shared with me. So listen to the things that I share the most, and chances are those are the things that are the absolute important parts of the horsemanship thing. So that's why we film everything that we where we go, and then Melanie brings it and, and dumps it, and uh, I say dump it, but she just downloads it into the computer and eventually gets it back to the top hand club. Mm-hmm. So you guys can see those expos, those speaking engagements and whatever it is. So it's very, very important that you guys uh, subscribe and, um, and join the, the top hand club, not only for the discounts, but for the, for the information that we're sharing on there as frequently as we possibly can. Now, now that we also have this platform on YouTube, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for watching us on YouTube. And as the, all the YouTubers start saying, don't forget to like and subscribe. So those buttons will be available to you. And it's very important for us if you like and subscribe because it helps us bring that to you in that new format. Mm-hmm. So we really appreciate you guys for doing that for us. What else, Miss Melanie? That's it. That's it already. So we're, it. we've wrapped up. Episode 80, right? Yes. Episode 80 is in the book, so to speak. So I tell you what, let's, uh, let's close with the uh, the same old closing statement that I always say, which I really mean from my heart. And that is, it's don't forget and remember that it's your ride, your journey, and your trail. So ride ever stride.